the session. Good evening and welcome to the West Shore Photography Club's regular Monday evening meeting. Today is November 1st, 2021. Uh, tonight's program, we have Eve Smith. Eve, Eve is going to be talking to us about event photography and families. And this is a really a good time of year because we have a lot of holiday seasons coming up. And uh, so we're going to get some tips and tricks on how to photograph that. Uh, before we do, however, we want to talk about a trip this coming Saturday to Boiling Springs. And uh, a notice on that will go out tomorrow. Boiling Springs uh, will be led by Mary Fox and Eve Smith. And Mary, can you give us a preview of what we're going to be photographing there? Yes. Um, Children's Lake in Boiling Springs is, a, is it's a, beautiful, a beautiful lake and it's surrounded by old homes. There's a gazebo on the property. There's a a, a barn or a, a farmhouse at the far end that a lot of people take photos of. There's waterfowl, there's some animals here and there, and the, the trees will be, I think they're perfect right now for the autumn leaves. And there's a, a little cafe called Cafe 101, and you can go there before, after, or even during, get some hot or cold drinks or some kind of a Danish, and they always we always get ice cream in the summer when we're there, but, and if you like ice cream in the winter, you can grab it then too. But if you show up, I think you'll have a really good time. Thanks, Mary. Mary, uh, will we be walking on grass or will we be basically on sidewalks? Oh, there's both. You'll have grass. Um, there's a little bit of sidewalk if you can if go on the streets around it, but it's mostly grass. I would say grass hills. There's um, Okay. And there's pathways around the, the, the lake also. You, can, you, can, you have your choice of whatever you want to do because there's plenty of both. <laughs> okay. Okay, great. Thank you, Mary. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, we have a couple of other upcoming trips which you're going to be hearing about. One is Peace Church, which we're partnering with the West Shore, the West Shore Historical Society. And you'll hear more about that next week. Uh, and also we have another trip coming up to Gerhardt Machinery, which is one of our most favorite trips. I keep saying that because a lot of them are favorite trips, but this one in particular has old rusty trucks and uh, tractors and stuff like that. That's really cool. And that's coming up in two weeks and we'll talk about that one also. Next Monday night, we have an in image review and there's no theme for this one. So you'll be able to uh, submit any kind of an image that you would like to do that for that. Our reviewer will be professional photographer Chris Heisey, and uh, he's always very entertaining and has certainly uh, some good insights into to our photography. I do want to ask, and this is anybody can chime in on this, just take a minute. Notice that the last week or so, some of our um, submissions for the image reviews have been down. Do you think that uh, either that's because we have a Thursday night submission requirement? Or do you think that we have too many image reviews? I wanted to get some insight from a couple of you uh, on that. Anybody Thursday. have Thursday? Thursday's the problem. Thursday's a problem? Yes, I think it is for me too. I often forget and I think, oh my God, I forgot. <laughs> me too. I agree. Okay. Me too. I can't remember to get it in on Thursday. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, we kind of thought, because I know I myself have often forgot about that or just didn't get to it, so. Okay, do you think we have too many image reviews? No. No. No, no not at all. We okay, need good. more. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. We're gonna re revisit that whole Thursday night uh, deal if we can, so. But thanks for the input, appreciate that. So Eve, we are on. And I think Eve uh, has said earlier that she will entertain questions during her presentation. So you don't need to wait and you don't need to type them in the chat. Just uh, press your space bar. And when she takes a breath of air, you can jump in and ask her your question. Uh, I think that, that interactive nature of it, I think is something that Eve really is gonna look forward to. So Eve, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're doing this presentation. Um, I'm really bad at talking about myself, but I started photography seriously around 2000 and really got into film, got into the dark room. I had a dark room in my prior 
uh, residents. And I think a few of us uh, went through the photography program over at Hack through Ron Talbot. Um, I graduated with a fine arts degree in visual arts and I just love it. Um, people photography is not the only thing I do. I love abandoned buildings, uh, old rusty stuff, um, et cetera. But got into doing it and it just people ask and it kind of rolls on itself. Um, tonight I'm gonna show uh, some wedding photography, uh, children's photography, um, senior portraits, the casual candid ones. Um, what else do I have up there, Joe? Well, anyways, a, a few different things. And just describe, uh, no matter what the setting is, um, how you can really capture the mood, um, a candid look, um, keep it casual, etc. So. And I have a couple of points that I'll go across while we look at, at uh, some images. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sure. All right. Okay. All right, Joe, now I got to figure out how to go down to the next one. Uh, one. If, if you use the arrow on your keyboard, just do forward or backwards. It's not doing anything. Uh, if you click on the... There we go. All right, my first bunch is wedding photography. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through and kind of describe uh, the thought process and things that um, I think to look for when I photograph. Obviously this was a wedding, this was between the wedding and the reception. This was the last stop we made of many. Um, and I really uh, wanted to use this umbrella so we brought them to the Capitol. They work there. They want this was one of the settings they wanted, um, and we I I really we started to set it up to have it set differently. And I said, let's get a silhouette look to you. So this is what we did. So it's really basically backlit. Now when I photograph people, I'm going to show you my equipment real quick. I use a speed light, and I always have a diffuser on it. When I photograph people, I always have my speed light on. I very seldom will not have a flash on, but always a diffused, using it as fill flash, um, not stark, harsh light. Here's another little diffuser. Um, it's a little more of a concentrated light, depending on the setting, I might use that. I shoot with a Nikon D750. Um, I have no uh, arguments of what camera is the best. Nikon is what I grew up on and I stayed with Nikon because I know it very well. And there's one other little thing I very seldom use in portrait photography, but it's called an ice light. And there is one photo in here that was, uh, it was dark, nighttime, and we used this to help light the couple up. So I'll show when I get to that image what that is. Generally, I use that just for still life um, photography, maybe at weddings or such when it gets to be dim. But this, Eve, Eve, yes. If you're, if you're showing things, we can't see them. Oh. Oh. You can't. We can only see the photo. Oh, you know what? That's because you probably have to scroll up and look at me in the little thumbnails. Yeah, yeah I, I can see it in the video. I've got yeah, yeah. the pictures open. So, so Eve, when you put the diffuser on, are you using the full power of the flash or are you, you backing that down a little bit? Uh, depending on the setting, um, like this outside, they, you know, I want the backlit look, but I need them to be slightly lit up. So I would uh, take it down a stop or two. Um, I don't have any of my flash settings set up, but I'll, I can tell you what things are shot at if you have any questions on my camera settings but um generally it's it's down a stop uh some of the darker venues i can tell you it's up a stop and okay. <clears throat> with, with the diffuser the other thing is a lot of times you have no place to bounce a light off or the walls are a terrible color the ceiling's too high um so i never use a flash without a diffuser 
uh, indoor, outdoor, it has, it's the, it's on, it's on. Okay. So. Eve, Eve, is your flash on the camera or do you hold it off the camera? No, I have it on. I have it on. Okay. Um, there, I, I have shot very few venues that I'll take my studio lights um, and remotely set them. Um, typically, what I need is on camera, speed light with a diffuser. Okay. Have you run into limitations with shutter speed? <clears throat> With the uh, flash on, I know my camera limits it at one two fiftieth of a second. Um, as in slow or the the slowest? Yeah, the, yeah, the best sync, the slowest sync should be uh, one one twenty fifth. Um, which is, if I need if I need more light, I can crank up the ISO um, on it, and one twenty fifth is fine. Uh, have you had trouble freezing subjects at a lower shutter speed? Not typically, depending, I should say. Um, typically not, but children are very unpredictable. So, you know, you might not capture what you want in a candid moment. Um, but typically, no, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Thank you. Sure. I do have a few tonight that don't have a flash and I'll point those out when I get to them. But other than that, so just show you, we'll just start off with this one. Now, uh, this one, yeah, I have um, fill flash on this. I'm obviously, one of the things that I wanna talk about is vantage points. Um, I wanted to get up high, shoot down on her so you could see sort of the cascading dress around her. Um, I have natural light coming in that window there. And one of the pet peeves that I look for are hands and uh, eyes, and I'll tell you that. Eyes, even if it's, obviously it's not straight on. I didn't want her looking at me, I, I just wanted it. It was a pre-wedding kind of contemplative moment that you like to see both eyes instead of a total um, silhouette uh, profile. The other thing that I'm, particular about our hands um, to get them to look relaxed and that you, they don't have them into a fist. If When hands are in a fist, no matter what the image is, it looks like they have no fingers. Um, it's a lot like somebody cutting off right at the knees. It looks like they don't have legs or what have you. Um, so a lot of people too, if you just have them shake their hand out and then lay it back down, it'll be soft and gentle. So if you're in that type of setting like this, those are the things that you would discuss with them, just uh, to get them to relax. So this I'm standing up on a chair, shooting down on her. Um, and this one, uh, most of the time, the other thing, most of the time I use a zoom lens. I do have prime lenses I use, but generally for, um, I'll say people photography, I use my zoom for the sake that you can't always move to where you want to be uh, with a prime. Um, I do have a few that I've used my prime. And if I use a prime, it's usually my 35 millimeter, 1.8. <clears throat> so um, a lot of these I shoot around a 5.6. Um, and depending on how close you are to the subject and how close the subject is to the background, um, a 5.6, you can have a shallow depth of field with the background if you have distance between, if that's important in that shot. So if anybody has questions about a particular image, please just ask, but I'll just kind of explain my thought process. So this is another bride, uh, pre-wedding, and why I'm showing some wedding photos, even if you don't shoot weddings, this is at the Penn Stater um, Conference Center. This is in the middle of a business complex that we found a little patch that looks like she's out, we're out in a field. So anytime you have a chance to photograph anybody that uh, isn't an activity, it's they want you to take their photo or an adorable child is there. If you just look for a different background um, that just adds something to it, if I just had her standing, I mean, it's a beautiful picture, but it adds to it that she's in this 
whatever this is, weed field or what have you, um, just kind of adds to the atmosphere of it, adds some softness to it, some natural type of look instead of the buildings and such that we would typically be shooting around. And this again, um, Phil Flash, and I'm standing, I have a little tiny step stool, folding steps do I take because I'm not that tall, so that because the ground is sloped, she's uphill just slightly from me, I'll stand on that so I can shoot more at her eye level. So this is one that I would shoot at, I shot at an eye level. Now, in this case, Eve, how far <clears throat> away from the subject were you? Uh, I'm really bad with distances. Like, don't ask me how far, you know, a landmark yeah. is to another landmark. But I'd mm. say uh, I'm probably, I'm probably about 15 feet away from her. In this 15? Center. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you use a zoom lens to pull her in. I do, yes. And, okay. and how loose did you shoot this? Uh... This, well, I shot a couple of her in here. This one particularly, I didn't shoot very loose, but I okay. do, that's, I'm glad you asked that because I do shoot loose. Um, generally, if I'm, uh, it's always better to shoot loose because you can crop down post editing, yep. uh, post processing. But this one in particular, um, I didn't crop that much out. Um, okay. and in this case, you made sure the background was far behind the subject as well, right? To get yes. the, if you, the field look. Yes, can you see okay. this little hand thing? Can you see my cursor? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. yes we can. That's a, yeah, that's a building there. So if I would say there's any distraction, there's a distraction. Um, but this is what we were surrounded by. So she was happy, I was happy to capture something like this in that setting. So if, if you put her closer to the tree, you wouldn't that building would be more noticeable, right? Yeah, and, and I could have, in all honesty, I mean, people photography, especially anytime you're doing anything that's impromptu, or this is pre-wedding, you've got X amount of time to get these photos. I could have shifted a little that she would have blocked, oops, sorry, didn't mean to do that, oh my goodness, that she would have blocked that. If I just stood over a little bit, these are things that you can look at hindsight. But at the same time, it's not such a huge distraction that we were happy with it. Well, the it, coloration it, of the building is so close to the wheat that it really doesn't distract. Okay. Well, good. No, not at all. Good. I think your technique minimized the building. I didn't even notice it until you mentioned it. Yeah, I, I tend to hindsight a lot of things. <laughs> So anyways, look for unusual settings in a place that you think you're not going to find. You never know. You never know. Eve, I like the contours on her cheek and so forth. Could uh -huh. you explain the lighting as you saw? Was it backlit? Was it coming from one side or the other? Your flash, yeah. et cetera. Yeah, this was an overcast day. I should explain this. This was to be an outdoor wedding in the courtyard. And less than a half an hour before the wedding they decided to hold it inside so <laughs> this was total overcast that we didn't even know if we'd get outside to take any photos we did get to go out uh, after and there is one at night of her then i'll get to also but um so it's overcast no no real shadows to it um i have my uh, drop down uh, uh, speed light on and I can tell you that I shot this in at f7.1 1 200th uh, one of a shutter speed in the ISO of 200 so it, you can tell obviously that it was overcast I didn't have to do a lot of compensating I guess I'll say it for that you did use your fill flash on this too I did mm -hmm. yep yep and and when with the diffuser on, it really spreads it out. And with this not being right up against her, it just kind of highlights her um, in a white dress. When you got white, you know, you got to, there's a lot to deal with in lighting with that also. So, uh, Eve, a question uh, maybe you'd talk about this at the end, but um, did you do much with post on this? I mean, it, it looks like maybe you didn't, but I'm not sure. 
I always do post. I cannot, I can't let anything straight out of the camera go anywhere. I'll, that's my honest. Well, what, my what's honest. what's the base? What's the basics in post for you for a shot like uh, that? Yeah, anything I do, I'll throw into Lightroom, and I do the basics in Lightroom. Um, I will crop if I want to crop. I will color balance if I need to color balance, um, and then I'll do the. Um, what do I want to call it? The well, straightening the perspective. Okay, the the lens correction. That's what I want to call. It. Do that. Then I go through in Lightroom and I'll call them down. Meaning, if I had 15 of this shot, which I know I didn't, but I'll say I did, then I'll pick one or two that I want to really work on. That if it's this shot that I like and I think the person is going to like, then I take this into Photoshop. Though I always do layers, which this will get a little bogged down. This is a whole other thing, but um, you open it up, you always make a background layer so it's uh, non-destructive um, editing and you do all your editing on the copy layer and I always do curved layers. Um, some people like levels, some people don't use any of that. Some people do that in Lightroom. I do it in Photoshop. So I'll do that um, if, I, if I need to clone anything out uh if there's a spot that i don't like or i just spot on my lens or what have you i'll look for that kind of detail in that so when i do things like that i don't take 100 images into photoshop and individualize them um if if i'm like okay these are good for proofs i'll do a lot of that work in Lightroom. if it's something that like this is the port a portrait not the portrait but a portrait i will take it in photoshop so i can fine tune it um, I can get into the whole curves thing because, it, but I, I won't bog everybody down with that. Uh, Thank you. Appreciate yeah. that. Sure. sure. So, <clears throat> so this is a natural setting, but I still use a little bit of fill flash just to make sure that her eyes aren't shadowed. I should tell you that too. So we don't have shadows in the eyes. Um, I do have one in here that I do, but I did on purpose. So we'll get to that one too, but it just, it's a fill flash, just gives it a little bit of brightness uh, on, on the uh, actual portrait. Um, this one's out at Liberty Forge, another wedding, and <clears throat> if you've ever been out there, this is the pond. Um, and, and the whole idea here is the composition of her kind of circling the fountain here. Um, little things that are same thing, you see both eyes on this. Um, I'll direct people with their chins. If they have them up just a little high, just drop it a little bit. Um, if I need them to look at me, I'll mimic what I want them to do, um, et cetera. Obviously we detail the dress so it's where I want it. And then little things, if you ever do weddings, um, little things to be uh, particular is the flowers need to be down near the hip. You don't want it blocking the dress. It's a accent. It's not the focal point. Um, and yeah, so again, fill flash. Um, now I'm not using a stool on this one. I'm a little bit lower on her, which I was good with. Um, and anyway, so the thought here was to get this um, arc circular. Oops, I keep doing that. I am so sorry. Um, idea of the fountain in there with her so when you, when you do a shot like this that has well like any of the wedding shots do you meter on the white do you meter on the skin tone or do you already know because of your flash settings what your meter readings will be or do you do an 18 percent gray or how do you do that yeah um i i generally will meet her on a dress with something like this because again you can bring shadows up but highlights if they're blown out they're blown out um but i will i'll i'll meet her face i'll meet her dress um i'll, I'll meet her for the ambient light and then um i don't want to say an educated guess but then i know where i want to take it if that makes sense yeah, um, yeah sure yeah, and generally, like this, if I meet her for the dress, um, her, now she's a very tan person, this is summertime. 
the skin's going to be a little dark. That's where the, the fill flash will help me. Um, and I keep it angled. Like it's not shooting down at the dress. It's shooting at in this area, I guess is how I want to say it. So that helps me. And there are, t I, I shoot on manual also, by the way, um, auto focus though, I can tell you that, but I do shoot some very seldom I'll shoot in aperture priority, but I like to have the control of what I want. So I know my camera, I meter, I know what I'm going to get out of it. <clears throat> and there are times that I have to adjust more than anything. I'll adjust the flash like, Oh, nah, it's a little bright. Bring it down a, a, a third of a stop as mine goes by thirds of stops or bring it up. That'll generally, give me what I want. That's where I probably do my, most of my adjustment. This one. Eve, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I know the answer to this, but do you have an assistant or do you have five arms? Yeah. No. Uh, now this one, I had a second photographer. I never get a, an assistant. Um, I do like to shoot with the second photographer and I have two of them that, well, three of them actually, but two of them I do most with that we use each other. Um, we shoot the same, we know what we're looking for, we're looking for the same details. Um, it's, it's not, it's, it's like shooting with two of you, the same of, of you, like you've cloaked yourself. So yes, if I can, I prefer to. She'll, if, if she's shooting this image, I'll go up and detail this dress. I'll pick it out, I'll, you know, take it to where I want it. Um, in group shots, that really helps because when you got your head behind the lens, it's really nice when somebody can say, hey, Joe, or what have you, um, lift your head a little bit. They're looking, or I would be looking if they're shooting at the whole, like detail, detail, detail of everybody. The other thing about group shots is <clears throat> I take more than I would than it, of an more images of a group shot than it than uh, an individual. Somebody's blinking, somebody's lost their focus, somebody's got a weird look, um, something. So I tend to not overshoot, but I shoot more to make sure that. And when you're in the moment, I'll look. You know, I'll look at the image and um, zoom in. But it's not like when you put it on the computer and look at the details. So I'm looking quickly to make sure that we got what we want and I can disperse into the next shot. Um, so it's, it, it helps, but it's not like when you blow it up on the computer and really look at the details. So I shoot a good bit with groups. And you're about 15 <laughs> feet from her as well here? Um, I might be. I might be a little farther than that, I would okay. say, on this one. And this, I would have my, I have to look, I'm sorry, I have to cheat. Uh, that's fine. Do you do that for photographic effect or to make the subject more comfortable, like you're not on top of them? Um, yeah, more for the the composition and the, the way I want to see it versus okay. and, yeah. and shooting a little bit on the loose side. Um, I don't want distortion. If you're shooting really close, you can get the distortion that, you know, their arm looks really big or, or a feature looks really big. Whereas when you're standing back a bit, um, you don't get any distortion. It gets, it's, you don't get that lens distortion. Okay, thanks. So here's another um, complex uh, photo. He's got glasses and he has dark skin and she doesn't. So uh, if you look at black tuxes and white dresses for metering, um, darker skin, lighter skin, it, it's a challenge. This was, a, this was up at Armstrong Winery up in Halifax. It was also a rainy day. Um, so fortunately they got the wedding in and this is after the wedding. Uh, we weren't sure we'd get any after shots, but we did. So again, as long as it's not raining, it's awesome to have overcast because you don't have the shadows. If you, if you notice like his glasses are just slightly tilted, 
that will keep um, glare off the, the glasses too. They are tough when you're doing group shots, especially if there's more than one person with glasses. Um, but this is an intimate, so it's a portrait, but we wanted that intimacy that it doesn't look stiff. That's the other thing. You always want it to look like what they would naturally look. And his eyes, the way he looks at her <clears throat> in this photo is a, an adoring, doesn't look like we made it up. We didn't, um, hey, do this, do this, do this. We had him put his hand, well, there was two photographers again, by the way, um, had his hand there, uh, just, just, I think I have a little spot there, but see, I should have taken that out. Um, the details of his hand, the detail of her hand, um, it, she's slightly out of focus. He is the focus because his eyes looking at her is really, it, that's what the main focal point is. This hey, if one, I, if yes, I may ask you, you mentioned about his glasses. Mm -hmm. uh, are they tilted forward like this? Um, tilted, like, see how, okay, I don't know if you're, if you have me in the thumbnail, but my glasses like this, and you just tilt yeah. them a little bit, see how okay. I can get rid of that? That's yep. the idea. If they need to put their chin down, um, generally with children, that's what you tell them, or you can even bring it down a little bit, depending on where you're standing. Um, but at eye level like this, if they can just be slightly tilted down, chin slightly down, it helps a lot. Okay, lot. thank you. Just cloning out a flash out of glasses is the worst nightmare you'd ever want. In all. <laughs> That's what that is. So again, overcast, overcast is your friend. You will recognize this couple. Um, this is Fred from the club. Uh, this was at a bed and breakfast at their wedding um, at the end of the day. And I had this idea in mind. Again, time frame is always what it is. Um, I'm standing on a, like a, a patio bordered wall, stone wall. So this is as high as I can get. This is the vantage point I can get. They had their, uh, her dog, well, their dog now, um, with them and he kept wanting to be in the shot. So I did take some images of him on the shot, but um, it, it, it was it was like the cat in the Zoom picture. You gotta get rid of the cats while you're doing your thing here, but um, he was cute. So anyways, so same thing. You can see their eyes. So it's not a total profile. No one really likes their profile. I mean, that's a silhouette. If that's what you're going for is one thing. The hands, you can see her ring. Uh, the hand is relaxed, um, hands together. So these are the kind of things that I'll say, hey, move your hand a little bit. Um, put your hand, you know, so it softly sets. She had a, a huge, um, whatever you want to call the under carriage of a dress. So when she sat down, it kind of ballooned up. So I really worked to try to get before I shot it to try to get it as smoothed out as we could. So she didn't look like, you know, she was sitting on a balloon, I guess. Little details that I try to take care of. Now this one I shot, um, I actually had my nephew was home and he's a photographer also. Um, I had him help, but by this point he was already gone. Uh, I told him to go ahead and go, but things like the necklace, you try to look at those details so that it's not all cockeyed over because once you see that stuff you can't unsee it um the background i have softened it i could have maybe cloned these out uh, oh, oh my word i am so sorry i keep doing that i could have maybe cloned these out um but i didn't so i didn't but, so this was a grassy area um it was a wooded area um where the the actual uh, ceremony itself was outside was in a like the old stone foundation of a barn but there's no barn there um so everything was shadowed and such but this was one area that was wide open and i guess if they would do this i did get one of her by herself also so um but this was this was probably one of their favorite images uh of the non-ceremony i would say 
and Phil Flash on that. Um, it was becoming dusk at this point. You can kind of see, well, maybe you can't tell, but the, the sun is very to the side. This was in June. So we had June hours of light, um, but, and this was as high as I could get. I would have maybe liked to been a little bit higher, um, but it's the highest thing I could stand on for as sure as I am that I could get to. So we were happy with it anyways. But again, you can see their eyes and the, the smile too. <clears throat> if I shot this for 15 minutes, their smile would be so stiff, it would be horrible. There's a limit to what somebody can do when they're smiling. There's only so much. And then after that, it's this locked in tense look. So you try to get what you want early in the, in the, in the shot, if that makes sense. So details, I like to look at details. Um, this was another outdoor wedding. Uh, seems like that's the thing. Um, they got married in their backyard and this is a koi pond. So I was walking around, uh, had a second photographer there, um, but I walked around during the ceremony and, and getting crowd shots, getting them in the foreground with everybody just stood. They got married in an arbor um, on their patio. So, you know, getting those kind of shots and and then I saw this and I forget who it was for the review last, oh, um, Mary Eileen, I think it was. She had a reflection shot that she reversed. This is reversed. I'm shooting over here and they're upside down. This is their reflection. So <clears throat> when I post process it, processed it, I flipped it. I didn't want them upside down. So, and this one I would have had I had my fill flash on. I can't remember. This was a September wedding and I, I it was evening. I, I can tell you that I can't, I don't think it was a clock overcast day though. I'm pretty sure it was not. <clears throat> and this is at a F5. Um, it's usually for wedding photography, the shallowest I will um, shoot, <clears throat> except for when I'm doing still life images like of the rings and such, that's a whole different thing. But so this is a reversed flipped um, <clears throat> reflection. <laughs> this is one, same thing. Um, this is during the service. <clears throat> this is the pastor. This is who stood up for them. And, <clears throat> you know, you're shooting along the sides and I was looking for something different. Um, this did not have a upper level, um, but I went out to the lobby area and this is a, a stained glass piece in the door. So this one, no flash. I have my lens up against this glass and I shot this at, sorry, a 1 50th of a shutter speed. <clears throat> so holding it against the glass helped me steady it at that slow shutter speed and just got something that was different. That's what I was looking for, something different. So that's the other thing, like to observe and look at surroundings and, you know, you, you get a lot of shots of the, the different angles of the same thing, but look for that next thing, I guess. Does that make sense? Even when you're doing a, a shot like this or in, in a wedding in a church like that, will you use like a 70 to 200 type of a lens at all? Um, <clears throat> typically I'll stay with my 24 to 120. I, I, I have, you hate during a live event to have to switch lenses unless you have two cameras, which I generally do have a backup camera. <clears throat> and my backup camera has a 18 to 200. It's a pretty wide uh, variety of zoom on that one. Now it's, I want to say it's an F4 and then it goes up to five, six once you zoom out. Um, but I don't like to change lenses if I don't have to. I will at the reception 
when I'm doing still lives, I'll put a prime on. <clears throat> but during a live event, it's all about here's the time. Let's get it. Let's get it. What do you got? Let's move. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, this is back at Liberty Forge. And <clears throat> there's one more photo of this fry later in this series real quick. But um, they were, they came down. This is the bride. This is her brother. And that's her mom. She lost her dad when she was nine and he was five to cancer. So <clears throat> they took balloons. And I'm not an advocate of releasing balloons, so please don't comment on that. This is what they wanted to do, but they released balloons uh, up to heaven for their dad. They each had little messages inside of each one of them. But um, I love that it was blue and white. The day was perfect for that. Um, even their color schemes, I couldn't have asked for a better color scheme for a photo. So again, group shot, I have, you know, this is I won't tell the whole story, but they had had a son prior. They split up and they got, they had not been married and then they got back together. So this is their son that they had previously. So it was, it was this was one of their favorite because it was their, uh, one of their sentiments to their dad. Um, so again, I'm not an advocate for releasing balloons, but that wasn't, so we won't talk about that. I. I just wanted to show the image on color on color. And it's not always about getting faces. I have a few in here that you'll just see the backs because it's more about the thought and the emotion of what's going on than focusing on a face. Um, that, it's that type of moment. This is uh, up at Penn State. This was. Uh, act, like the party was going on and but when this was the photographer and I um, she was you know, maybe I was her second shooter that day um, <clears throat> but when we walked in there was this brand, this piano I'm like we have got to get a shot of this so um, this is later on she already has her well I, she had her shoes with her I'm like take your shoes off uh, we got rid of them we initially had them here we didn't want them in there just uh, casual, you can barely see her eye. It's not exactly a, a profile. This is a profile, so I'm shooting myself in the leg for what I said earlier, but just sort of a fun image that without this piano, we wouldn't, it wouldn't, we wouldn't have anything like this. So they were a fun couple. This was just a nice candid shot that we got inside, obviously, because it was raining at the time. So did the diffuser on the <clears throat> flash prevent highlights in the window and the glass in the background? Um, it, yes, it did. Uh, and the angle that I shot at, you can see a little bit in through there. And to be honest with you, that is probably the reflection of the dreaded lights from the ceiling, <clears throat> which when they're fluorescent lights is not a fun scenario. But so that probably isn't even my flash, I, I would tell you. You see the reflection a bit from probably my flash from the um, metal here. You kind of see a reflection in there, but this I'm pretty sure was probably a reflection from the lights above. <clears throat> but I like that you got like this little reflection here. I like that her feet were out. They, it was Penn State, so it was blue and white. So we had her show the, I don't know what this is called. I should know, but uh, the under lacing. Um, so. Uh, I noticed that you uh, managed to get his uh, shadow there from the fill flash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that something you generally try to avoid or you, um, it doesn't bother you? It, it depends. Um, this, this shot, I was happy enough that I didn't have the, that I moved to the area that I didn't have a big honk and white spot for my, any kind of flash. You'll, with the diffuser, it's not, just a, a white beam, but you still see the big square diffuser in a reflection. You see this thing. So I was working an angle to try not to have that. Um, so it didn't bother me. It's optimal not to have it, but I think there was enough to focus on for them that it's not 
stand out. I could have cloned that out, but I'm sure all of us have tried, have done this. Cloning out close to skin is to get it so it doesn't look like you've done anything at the skin is not an easy task. So again, if this was something that I knew was going to be the wedding portrait, I would have gotten rid of this. I would have gotten rid of that. I might have even gotten rid of those. But this fun, casual moment, I was okay with it. Okay, thanks. Sure. I hope I'm answering these questions well enough. So let me tell you, you are definitely doing that. It's very okay. educational. Okay. I hope I'm not over talking because I tend to do that. But okay, so here we are at the reception. They are, this was a, um, a another outdoor wedding. Um, but the, the wedding and the reception were in the same location, which is great because you're not moving around. But people tend to get drunk really fast. <laughs> so then you're kind of corralling cats a little bit, but this is my one photographer friend that I shoot um, a lot of the weddings with. This is her daughter. So um, it, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, so I got up on a chair. I wanted, I took maybe three shots of this and this one I liked the best. Like the girls here, Maybe I want to look at her walking into it, but that's okay too. It's a casual, we are having a good time um, moment. That's so to capture stuff that's not um, stiff is, and, and this guy's not perfect, but let me tell you, he was blitzed. So, <laughs> you know, it, they'll laugh, they laugh at that. Like, oh yeah, I don't know. I don't remember the guy's name. Um, look at Larry, you know, there's Larry. That's typical Larry. So, and they, well, you can't see it. They had huggies on here. There's something about Miller Light that had to do with when they met. So this was all Miller Light, but I forget what that was. So. Oh, so they were drinking water. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. But anyway, so. <clears throat> you had more reaction with champagne. Yeah. See, there you go. Well, so the shot itself is to to show the fun, it's not, it does, people don't have to be perfect looking if that's, you know, like I said, this guy and people might be blocked, that's okay. It's just the general atmosphere. This girl's already got beer on her dress. It's all good. That's the ones that they enjoy <laughs> for a memory that gives that candid capturing the moment photo. The reason this is the reason this is so good is almost everybody is doing something. Mm. I mean, it's a very active picture. They, they were very active people. This was this was. I'll just tell the side story. It was the day after my sister's funeral, and the last thing I would have wanted to do was shoot a wedding. But obviously, I committed, and this is one of my best friends. And it happened to be that obviously my nephew was home from college because of the funeral. So I was gonna shoot this by myself, which this shot is by myself, but um, I was able to have him there too. So shooting a wedding and having two people is wonderful for the vantage point. And it's wonderful when you shoot with somebody that you know how they shoot because they don't get in your shot and you don't get in their shot but they can be up close for a ceremony. You've got the back, you switch around, you move around that kind of thing. So, but yeah, it, it wouldn't have been the day I would have wanted to do something like this, but it, it was a lot of fun, which helped. It was a lot of fun. Eve, I'm going to interrupt you for a minute and tell you that it's 10 minutes till eight. Okay, all right. We, we probably are not going to get through all this, to be honest with you. Let's just kind of scan through. So here, Oh my goodness. Oh, there. Okay, this is another fun thing. Later, after the ceremony, these, this is another um, on location wedding and reception. Again, tend to, you know, get a little boisterous at the end. So just shooting something, they all had cigars. Um, go out on here. This was up at Indian Town Gap at the, whatever that thing is at the top of the hill. I don't really, it's like a cabin lodge kind of thing. Um, just to capture the fun. 
Uh, let's move on. See, I do talk too much. This was a New Year's Eve wedding. <clears throat> I did this in black and white just for the aspect of New Year's Eve. Um, I liked more of the reactions than, I, I think you look at each individual more in the black and white in this. It was um, an old castle in Reading. Um, and it was the countdown, by the way. This was right when, you know, the new year was coming in. So just capturing, like, some of them are looking, like, this guy's kind of looking off at, at me from the corner of his eye. This is straight on. This is sort of over his glasses. I have the bride. He's not looking at me. I, I just like that there's somebody with a glass raised that almost looks like it's coming out of him. So I liked, I liked the, the, the graphic of it, maybe I, I'd say, um, and the detail that you look at in black and white versus color with this one. Again, on location wedding and reception. This is prior to the wedding. This is the groom shot, obviously. Um, I had to really work this image. I'm up on a step stool, kind of a high step stool, to be honest with you. And I wanted it slightly distorted that he was up front center. Um, but to really get them lit up, it was an old castle. It's a dark hallway. Um, I really had to work the lighting to get what I wanted. I did not get it on the first shot. Um, some of them I had him blown out and, and some of them they were too dark, but I finally kind of got in, uh, in between. But I liked the whole exaggerated look here. A lot of, again, I look at lines, um, just the attitudes, that kind of a thing. This was um, prior to the wedding. Prior to the wedding. I'm gonna kind of like skim through some of these now. This is them coming in. Again, capture that moment. I'm down low instead of shooting at them straight on. I'm, I'm, so I got this exaggerated upward shot um, and it's slightly in front, but not in front. So, but you just see him elated coming in. He's greeting the crowd. She's loving it. She's looking at him. Again, black and white, just they actually, if you saw in the other thing, they had purple lights and everything like that too. But I liked it that you concentrated on this more with the black and white than um, in color. So nothing wrong with either or, but that's why I did it in black and white. This was where I used that ice light. This was the last shot of the day. And yes, I did make this a little larger than it was, but there was, the moon was there. And this is why we wanted to shoot it. Um, it was an outdoor wedding again, <clears throat> and we, the swing was here. And the moon was beautiful. Not as big as this, but it was a full moon. So we envisioned this shot and we, again, second photographer and I, and we didn't know because at this point you can see they are sweaty, it's summer, it's hot. We didn't know if we encouraged them to go get this one more shot and we did. So uh, obviously I have flash on, but <clears throat> the other photographer, excuse me, on is sort of over here, but beside me with that uh, ice light just to bring some more light on it because it's pitch dark out there. There was nothing. We weren't near anything that was lit up. And like I said, yes, I enhanced that a little bit. So this was an image that this is the bride that, and, and this is her brother. They lost their dad at nine and five. And he surprised her with a whole slideshow of their dad and their childhood. And this is, so I, I wanted to make sure I captured David. I knew this family since they were these before he died. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, but I wanted to, I captured this. And because I knew them personally, I was crying the whole time I shot this. But anyway, so I, I just love that I've got her emotion. I captured him. I took probably at least 20 shots during this thing. And this was my favorite. This was out again at Liberty Forge, but inside for the reception. Um, this was back to my friend's daughter's wedding. Again, they have a pond, they have a little deck and I envisioned this shot. And it was one of the last shots that I got of the day. And you never know, you don't um, interfere with the activity. You don't, I don't pull them away from their guests 
constantly. This is one I wanted to get and they were more than happy to come down and get. So um, things that, you know, they're looking at me, but they're not uh, too serious. They're not too, you know, hysterical. Um, her hands, you can see them, you see the ring. It just kind of leads you up her leg and into them. And I was good with all of this dropping out um, because I wanted more of this concept. They're actually, my friend has a sailboat, so the whole dock thing fit into the whole aspect of it. And this was the Penn State one. Again, the very last shot of the day. It's now raining again. Um, <clears throat> so we asked, hey, would you go out with an umbrella? So they were walking. I got a couple shots of them walking and they stopped and kissed. And you can see some of the raindrops coming down. I probably, probably some of these were even on my lens. Um, same thing, he's got her dress pulled up. She's in her bare feet. It's more of the um, sentiment uh, that you look for versus here they are staged at the wedding venue. Let's get the family photo. So I'm always looking for these thoughts. And this was their umbrella. I typically will take an umbrella, but this was their umbrella and it meant something to them, but I can't remember what, what it was, but anyways. So children's photography, I'll, I'll go through this kind of fast too. I was at this um, location photographing a senior and these two were twins. Um, I, I can critique this image because she's not super sharp, et cetera, but they were there hanging out and the senior that I was photographing had babysat these two and they were adorable. They're, they were actually sitting here, not hugging each other, but they were sitting here watching us. And I said, hey guys, let me take your photo, put your arms around each other. And he spontaneously gave her a kiss. And I did shoot this loose, <clears throat> excuse me, and I cropped in quite a bit, but it was just one of those, I wanted to capture the moment. moment. Um, so that's what this one is. So again, I just turned around and saw them and, and didn't plan it. This is another one. I'm photographing, this is actually my grandchildren, but I was photographing him on his, his one year picture. And <clears throat> she had been at a birthday party. So I was there by myself, well, without her. And she had gotten home. She, mom doesn't usually let them have sugar and she was sugared up big time. And she kept running between me and the, uh, the camera and him. So I couldn't, get, I was getting a shot. And I'm like, Ray, stop. So finally I said, all right, get in the shot. I took one shot and this was what I got of them. And I liked it in black and white too, because it's more of the, um, this is so her, such a poser. And I didn't tell her to do anything. Um, he's like, what the heck is going on? Cause he's a year old. Um, but yeah, again, more of the emotion of that moment and capturing what I had no idea I would capture. Uh, I put a, actually, I had a bubble machine here. And if you look at my horrible clone job, you can actually see some of the pink of it, but I was okay. Cause it kind of looked like it was paint that was spilled there, but, uh, <clears throat> he was playing in water, had a bubble machine, uh, just had fun with it. And it's got a little eye drop on his, um, eye. So again, more of the candid moment shot than, uh, I mean, I set it up, but I didn't set it up if you know what I'm saying. This was at a wedding. Uh, this little guy was behind me. I was shooting, photographing the bride outside after the wedding. <clears throat> and he was standing there. He had, they had a red umbrella, umbrella for a prop and he was holding it. And I, the bride's daughter was having a meltdown. So there was a pause in the activity and I turned around and he was standing behind me. Um, I didn't say anything to him. He's not even looking at me. Um, but, and I did crop this in and obviously turned it to black and white because the red umbrella was just pulling away from him. And to me, here's the image. It was his eye. So again, look around, see what, what's going on. And you can get a shot that you didn't even think that you would get. This is, here's the red umbrellas. Um, so here's another one. Um, 
right after that he was hanging out and he had the girl's umbrella, the whole thing, you know, I'm like, all right. So this, when I said, Hey, look at me, this guy is just doing whatever he wants to do. He's got stuff on his shirt, et cetera. But so again, I'm waiting for the bride to be ready again for more photos and looking at what I can photograph. This is a soccer game, obviously, again, my granddaughter, but the vantage point on this, so there's nothing super special except for the fact that I got down low. So I'm, you know, here, she is totally in the forefront. She's, they're obviously alternating players. She's, you can tell she's even a little sweaty, but she's not even watching the game at this moment. I don't know if she was watching another game. The goalie, I have no idea, but just the emotion of her, like, all right, I'm bored, am I going in? The ball is up front, and then you see the kids and the activity and the coach in the background. So I kind of, I like the composition that it sort of encircles. So again, candid moments, just, um, but I think what made it the best was the vantage point. Low, she's in the forefront, kids are in the back, versus just standing, taking a photo. This is another one, it was a happenstance. This is actually a cell phone picture, but I had to put this in here. My sister and I were trying to take photos. These are her two and these are her children and these are my grandchildren. And we were trying to take a photo of the four of them. They live an hour away. They don't get together that often. This is Reed's uh, Batman mask. Weston would not take it off. This, I do not even know what they're doing. I have no idea. And the entire time Reed is posed and ready for us. So I just had to put this in because it's one that I actually have framed and hanging. It just is one of those, we, and I think Diane, when I posted this on Facebook, you were the one that said, you're gonna have to get them to recreate this when they're older. Absolutely. And it, it's a cell phone picture. I wasn't there with my camera. We were there to talk to my mom about my sister's situation and just went out to take these photos and it wasn't, wasn't really happening, but it was just funny, the whole thing this, him the whole time, and these two, I don't know what they were doing. So um, I'm, I'm gonna scan through these two. This is a cell phone picture. Uh, this is a JROTC um, uh, comp drill competition. And I did a panoramic uh, shot of this, just sitting in the bleachers with the rest of the crowd. I, I just liked it. It was at Redland and they're red, I guess they're red, white, and blue. It just everything was so um, similar and, and red, white, and blue and patriotic. So I took that and I had my camera there that day and the Colonel then said, hey, would you take a group shot? So now I've got all kinds of parents standing around me with their cell phones. So you can see they're looking all over the place, but you've got one, you got one, there's somebody over here that was looking at me. Oh, this one. You know, there's um, this one back here was looking at me. Some of them were looking at me, not. But again, I just love the red, white, and blue. They're, they're blue and red. We've got this going on here and the flag. So um, so I send him the uh, image then too. This is a family photo. And uh, like I said before, you can take these. This is, of course, of my sister and family again. You can take these that aren't about their faces. I had taken, I took photos obviously of the four of them or the five of them looking at me, but I'm like, I had to walk away, I'll take some photos, not prompting him. This guy is so easy to photograph, it's not even funny, but he turned around and looked at me. Um, so that's the center of the image. Um, and this was, my sister had asked for this, her and her four kids, so. Um, this is another one, did a family photo, which I think is next. And again, I had uh, the, the boy and dad and the mom and the daughter. And I'm like, just walk away, you know, I'll get some from you walking away. And she bent over and picked this dandelion up. And actually, this is my daughter and granddaughter. She is not happy because she was doing whatever she wanted and bent over and got this. And she's like, come on, you're supposed to be. Well, it ended up capturing this beautiful moment that Kids think dandelions are flowers, you know, and she's giving that to her mom. So it was very unplanned and very personal moment. So again, 
was keep your eyes open and look to see what else you might get. It's not always what you came for. It used a flash on this too? I did. Um, oops, okay. sorry. Yep, that's touchy. Let me see this one. The only ones I wrote down, if I didn't, I don't know why I didn't put the flash um, uh, setting on, but yeah, I did. Because the only ones I wrote that are the ones I didn't use a flash on. Otherwise, I did, yes. Now this was, this was, they wanted family photos and it was late till she got off of work and it's down in, they live in Greencastle. So it was getting pretty, pretty dark by the time we took these photos. Um, this is a little difficult sometimes when you don't want neon colors. Here's a whole lot of action going on, but they wanted flannel shirts. They wanted the casual look and this just captured everything and the details um, usually it's guys that will put their hands in a pocket I either have them just put the thumb and have the hands or fingers out or they put the fingers in and the thumb out you'd never like them to have their entire hand in because it looks like they don't have hands so whichever they're comfortable with you know I direct them in that sense same thing you want the hand nice kind of just draping but nicely and this was just you can't prompt kids they do what they want and it just was a cute very personal moment um it shows his little innocence and you know her loving it so that's that this one uh, was up at boiling springs and i have a few of them with dogs which just like with babies can be a challenge um this is backlit it was for christmas it was november uh, it was a little challenging that they came in red, but it was a holiday picture. It was going to be on their Christmas um, card. So, you know, but tends to be that all you see is red in an image. I did desaturate the red a bit. I will tell you that. The other thing was she, I guess, goes to a tanning bed, but she was very tan. He was not. So that was an interesting, and he was sort of reddish, uh, ruddy complexion. But um, the dog, it, it, I was by myself. It, when we had Terry Wells, she could, as she said, it's nice when you have somebody else that makes noise or what have you and has the dog look at you. But I, I did a clicking noise. The dog looked at me and I loved that uh, he, it was a he for sure, uh, had the tongue out, um, et cetera. So I'm skimming through these as fast as I can. Fluorescent lighting, uh, graduation at the farm show, horrible lighting, um, but just another candid moment that uh, two guys that graduated together that were friends and um, in the chaos of getting all kinds of different photos, this was one I liked. The same thing, the glasses, um, they're slightly tilted down. It just, it, it worked and it doesn't always work with glasses. Um, I'm going to reference one other thing, the background. There's one other picture that I'm going to come to, but if you look and see what this background is. Um, this one is the one I talked about that I left the shadows in um, for the mood. This was a senior portrait. Um, you know, the way he actually picked out his own clothes. And I just love the fact that they really worked with the truck. So um, same thing. Thumbs are in, fingers are out. Um, he's just got that really, I hate to use the word macho, but um, that type of look. And hence, I left shadows in on that one. Eva, I have to ask you about the license plate. Yeah, do you like that? It was actually a Harley Davidson license plate. I black cloned it out, and then that's where I put my logo. Okay. The image, I, I mean, I gave them an image without it, but for the, for the, uh, Facebook I did. This was a football player that did not want to wear his uniform. This is at Mechanicsburg. We got uh, admittance to, they got a key to the um, uh, football field. And it was at night. <clears throat> we were actually shooting some dramatic shots. I uh, got a nice one of him on the bleachers. But this one's same thing. This was, he was, he's one that this is his look. Um, smiling is not his thing. And if he did, it was more it was artificial and forced. So um, nice casual shot, 
his senior candid portrait and he got a little bit of the field. I did crop this one in. I think I even shot it landscape and cropped it in as uh, portrait mode. So this one was up at the Environmental Center in Mechanicsburg um, where I'd taken the photo of my sister and the family. We were in those paths taking photos and done, it was getting dark. I hadn't even gotten this out of the, my vehicle. And we walk out of the arch of trees and the sun is setting. I'm like, oh, are you in for a few more? So I grabbed this, obviously I have flash on her, let this drop behind. And what it, one thing that I wanna point out, I was telling Joe about this. So the hand under the chin, it's, it's very important if you have somebody do this, that they are not actually leaning on their hand. If they lean on their hand, this is gonna get all scrunched up. And, and that is a typical thing for somebody to do. If you're leaning with your elbow on your knee and putting your hand under your chin, you're gonna lean on the hand. So you have to uh, prompt them and say, put your hand under there, but don't put any, don't put your face down on it, just touch it. So that's what I really wanted to show you with that. Um, I liked the angles that we got with this and I liked that this was just all muted out um, and it was more of just the background for her. This was down at um, uh, Pincho in December in the cold. Um, very fair complected uh, girl but and a red shirt. Uh, I did desaturate the red a bit but just like I left all this blown out um, on purpose so that she was a focal point, but you kind of got the idea of what was going on back here. And I didn't mind that it was blown out <clears throat> for that reason. Definitely, excuse me, fill flash on her. Um, you can see the direction of the sun. That's the other thing um, when you're outdoor. Um, if you can have it lit like this, that they're not squinting or getting weird shadows on their face, that's a plus. And it happened to be we could get on this dock with that kind of lighting. So it worked out that way. It was morning also, by the way. This was in Harrisburg. This was an engagement photo. We were walking the streets of Harrisburg. Um, and again, you never know what the dog's gonna do. You don't know the shot you're gonna get. I love when they have their tongues out. Um, <clears throat> sometimes they're distracted, that kind of a thing. And uh, I like the framing of just the black she had some black on her. Um, same thing, hands are important. Um, the legs, I wouldn't have wanted her legs straight forward. It would have been an uncomfortable look. So she just has them slightly off to the side. I like his casualness of his, how we have it set. And they're just kind of leaning in. And it's off center a little bit, which is fine because she's kind of flowing. It goes like this. And it was, the dog was cooperative, so. Another dog picture, this is a city island um, with the bridge in the back. And <clears throat> this was a young puppy that they rescued. So she was very energetic, but she was the sweetest little thing. So there's, I there's if I really zoomed in on it, there's gnats everywhere. I mean, it was interesting in that aspect, but I got the dog uh, to, you know, again, I love the tongue out. It's for some reason, I like the tongue being out. Um, Flashville, he was deep eyed, um, a little more of an olive complexion. She's fair, not as deep eyed, always a challenge. Um, fill flash really, really helps. The hand, this is important to me, and even the feet. I don't really want to see the bottom of their, their shoes. So if you can, women tend to be a little more flexible than men. So sometimes it's difficult, but if I don't see the soles of the feet, that makes me happy. Um, I think I only have two more guys. This one <clears throat> was with another photographer doing an engagement shot um, down at the Gettysburg barn venue that their parents, oh, his parents owned. They had an old Jeep Willie that we took out there and I got reflections of them in the wheels and all that, but she's over to this side photographing them. So I'm walking around like, well, I don't wanna get the same shots. And I got this silhouette of them they're highlighted from the light hitting them. Everything else is just dropped down. Um, 
I'm pretty sure I probably brought this out a little bit on, in post. I don't remember, but I bet I did. And I have the, the sunspots, the flares in there. I'm good with all of that. It's just this different shot. Um, and this is their land and, you know, it was just an intimate moment. And this, okay, this is the last one. This I wanted to show you. This is why I said, look at the background of the two graduates that I photographed. This, this is my sister, and this was a family photo of them uh, after the graduation. <clears throat> well, I needed a portrait for my sister's funeral. So I went through and I cropped this entire thing down. So it tells you that you can take one image and get another image out of it. Um, so this is a full bodied, full framed photo of the family. I cropped it down and all I did was mute this down. I'm gonna scroll back really hopefully there. This is the background. And I just muted it down and it looks like I photographed her in the studio and I did not. I was able to print this to 11 by 14 um, for that service. So you can get something out of, you can get multiple images out of one shot by doing just what I just did, cropping in and changing and what have you. So, all right, I think I got through them all, Joe. <laughs> 15, 60 minutes over. This is great, Eve. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. I learned so much. I learned about not putting your chin down on the, and not showing the bottom of the feet, you know, the soles of the shoes. So many interesting things. Just the little details can set it apart from um, the, um, somebody shooting that doesn't know what they're doing, I guess. I don't know, but just little details. Once you uh, focus in on them, it just helps, so. Eve, so quick, the, quick question, Eve. Uh-huh. Quick question. Uh, I do a lot of shooting in houses of my grandchildren and daughters and whatnot for holiday events. Yes. And I'm going to get a mini soft box like you got. Is that too close to use that? Like, no. all out the faces, will it look too flashy? You know what I'm saying? No. Um, if you need to just um, knock the uh, stops down a little bit on the flash, depending on how close you are to them, um, you, you would be fine. It softens it. It bronzes the the flash out so you don't have this direct uh, um, shot of light. It softens it out. So if you have to stop down the flash, just take just take a photo real quick, look at the back of it, and then it'll tell you if you have to knock down, stop down the uh, flash. Okay, thanks. Sure. Eve, all the small details that you gave made for the program tonight. Thank you. Oh, sure. Do you do sure. any do you do any studio work? Do you have a studio? I do not have a studio, but I have studio lights. Um, I have use of studios, um, so I do them. I obviously prefer candid shots, as I showed you tonight. Um, I, I could have, I would have included one that I love the best. It was of my nephew, and he's a wrestler, he actually gold medal wrestler, and I had him doing a push up with a black background and I was on the floor. And if I think of it, I'll stick it on um, the club's Facebook page, but um, it's, that's a studio shot that, that would tell you the studio. So even in studio, I tend to like something more creative than just a, a shot, I guess. But I've done headshots like for Prudential um, and do it on site, take the equipment there the backdrop and do it at their place of business. So. Any other questions for Eve? Well, if not, Eve, thank you so much. If everybody can unmute themselves, let's give Eve a round of applause. That was just a great presentation. Thank you, Eve. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Eve. Thank you. And, uh, this, uh, this week we'll have, next week we'll have an image review 
and the submission deadline will be discussed tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay. So, is there any theme? Pardon me? No. Is there oh, there is theme? no theme. No, Patty, there is no theme. So you can put in all the flowers you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thanks everybody. And uh, you'll get an email tomorrow morning. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Eve, if you can, you can stop sharing your screen now and then everybody can see everybody else. There we go. Okay, right there. Perfect. Eve, that was great. Well, let me oh, stop the record. You. Let me stop the recording here. Uh, there. Stop recording.